Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. My name is Alex, that's Kirby. Today we're going to be talking about Florida properties are cash flow negative. And with that, and for anybody that don't know what cash flow negative means, cash flow negative means is if I bought a rental property today and then let's say the mortgage is a thousand bucks, the mortgage is a thousand bucks. And then if I'm renting the property for a thousand bucks, that means I'm cash flow neutral. Really cash flow negative if you add in maintenance and property management fees. But I'm let's say cash flow neutral. All my expenses come out to a thousand dollars. The rent I receive is a thousand dollars. That's neutral. Cash flow positive mean that my mortgage is a thousand bucks a month, but my rent is coming in. All my expenses a thousand dollars a month, but the rent payments coming in at fifteen hundred dollars a month is more than my expenses to maintain that rental property. That's cash flow positive. Cash flow negative is just the inverse of my cost, my expenses to rent out the property is a thousand bucks and I'm getting the number below that. All right. So for all y'all that's out of the Florida space and newer investors that's in the Florida space that just haven't uh, talked to your insurance company yet, uh, it's going to be a big change that's coming in the months, just depending on when your insurance renews, um, that could cause your rental property to go cash flow negative. All right, I'll just give you an example of what happened to me, and then you can just correlate how it can happen to you. All right, so this property is not cash flow negative, but a big expense was added on to it. All right, so the insurance on one of my rental properties go up at the beginning of each year, January 20th of every year. And then I get the notice in the mail, I get the notice in the mail that my insurance in Florida will go from $2,600 a month to $5,600 a month. So what that is, that is about a $3,000 jump. If you have mortgage escrow payments and things like that. So $300 a month. So $3,000 total. So about $250, you know, but let's just call it $300 a month increased in escrow. Now you add on top of that, the insurance, I mean, the uh, property tax rate also went up uh, a nice little deal, nice little deal. So it went up about $75 to $115 a month. So combined together, that's four hundred, about $400 a month in escrow payments that it increased from 2022 to 2023. So now imagine if I'm in the, if I have a tenant that's just on another lease, like my tenant's lease don't coincide with the escrow payment increases and things like that. So let's say, they're paying a set amount of, let's say, $1,500 a month. And then now my escrow just jumped up at the beginning of the year. My escrow jumped up $400 a month. And now my mortgage payments would be somewhere at the, you know, $1,600, $1,700 a month range. Let's just say that. That means my property is cash flow negative. For some people there, and I talk to insurance companies and things like that, and I told them how much my insurance uh, jumped up because I was trying to change it out and go to somebody else. And they said, your number is lower than most people. And that's when my eyebrows started to raise. I said, what? What's going on? What's going on here? So that's when it came to my real realization. If, if my insurance is going higher, then everybody else's insurance is going higher. If everybody else's insurance is going higher and property tax are going higher, that means escrow payments are going higher. So especially with these people that bought rental properties in Florida, I'm talking about in Florida, in that tail end of 21, going into 22, and then when interest rates was rising, they was all they was already buying properties that was cash flow neutral or cash flow negative already. But now they're on that one year lease, and then now those uh mortgage, I mean those uh insurance terms gonna come up, those property tax terms gonna come up, and it's gonna balloon up their mortgage payment. By three to four hundred dollars a month, just give or take. I'm just using my example. So they have to have the ability to raise to get that same margin they was getting before. They have to have the ability to raise the tenants' rent up three to four hundred dollars a month. And then that's where it's going to be some problems where the tenant is not going to be able to afford that big increase. And then now, what do you do if you didn't buy the property right? If you bought a cash flow negative property at the beginning. Is going to be worse cash flow negative once the renewals of insurance and property taxes come up. So 
Just wanted to start off there. What you got with that out? Man, this is gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> this is gonna be terrible. Uh, the whole whole time you're talking, I'm just like thinking of my future. Uh, but uh, right. but yeah, I uh, I haven't seen any uh, like estimates for my future escrow uh, yet, but I have um, seen an increase, like especially on car insurance um, in Florida, right. which has also gone up a lot. Uh, I think car sh- car insurance alone, uh, for me at least, went up um, about fifty percent. So right. yeah, it's crazy. Right. Um, yeah, and then for your for your rental property, like for for just so you know, and then everybody else, you won't get that notice that the insurance is going up to you about two two and a half months out from renewal. That's when it's going to tell you your insurance rate and what the new policy rate will be. So like mine renewed January 20th, I got the notice around December 1st. And then so on, that's that's how it goes. And uh, my property in Pensacola, it went up 88%. So it's some increases and Florida insurance is already high. And then it's a lot of people out there right now that's uh, the insurance company is just saying, we're canceling your insurance. We're not carrying you no more. Because a lot of insurance companies try to leave the state of Florida because of the way Florida runs their insurance, you know, run their insurance companies, their insurance policies within the state. So that it will be a driving force. And that's why, I, that's why I wanted to do this video to get the warning out there for, especially those people that just bought these rental properties in Florida and and most of the properties that were selling, because I'm looking at the market every day, most of the properties that were selling and the rents that they was receiving at the time was not even covering the mortgage when they sold it at that high price that they bought it at. Now, add on that you about to get a ballooning uh, mortgage, I mean, ballooning uh, insurance, ballooning taxes when you transition from 22 to 23. That is going to be a big headache for landlords around and you know, you're paying, you know, six, seven percent interest rate. Now your insurance going up 100, 150, 200 percent. Then your, you know, your property taxes a month is going up, you know, one or two hundred dollars, depending on the size of the property and all that. That's if you're if you're a real estate investor, you don't want to be sitting there eating that cost where you're paying out of your pocket for somebody else to live in your property. Usually the cost is transferred over to the tenant, but if you already at even or negative, that's going to be a big gap. You got to jump up rent just to get cash flow positive. And you've been hearing in the news about, you know, economy slowing down and stuff like that. That's going to be a lot of money for somebody to eat or if somebody to even renew on that lease. If you got to bump it up three, four five hundred dollars a month just so you can break even back in 2020 2021 when people was you know rates going up six seven hundred dollars that was good but now as the as the housing market i mean not the housing market but the workforce market start to contract it's going to be less and less people with the ability to afford those rent and that's going to be a headache for landlords in florida so do you see all right is this just going on in florida or would this be going on in places like California, New York, Arizona as well? Oh no, I, I don't see it in I don't see it in Florida. This I mean the big increases are happening in Florida. And that's because I mean, as you know, transitioning into from 21 to 22, uh the insurance companies was already six billion dollars underwater in Florida, in the state of Florida. A lot of insurance companies have been leaving the state of Florida because back you know, back in 2014, 15, you know, all those roofing companies were coming in and putting new roofs on on, on people's houses and the insurance companies were having to eat that. And that was going around the whole state. So that put the insurance companies in, a, you know, a tight spot because that was billions of, upon billions of dollars. Then you add on the hurricane that just hit down there in Fort Myers, all the money the insurance companies got to pay down there. So all those things are just cascading on top and insurance companies just like, we're losing money. I was talking to uh, one of my insurance uh, agents in Georgia, and she and she was telling me I bought I bought this insurance agency from a guy who said he's picking up to move down there to Florida, and this was four years ago. She talked to him two days ago, 
he called her and said, hey, I'm leaving Florida. I'm leaving Florida, moving back to Georgia. If you wanted to sell the insurance company back to me. She's not, but that's how bad it is in Florida to do insurance because the cost is going up astronomically high. And it's and it's gonna be it's gonna be brutal. Jeez, that's crazy. Well, guys, if you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to leave a comment, uh, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next video.